Hi there, I'm Edward Collin and thank you for engaging with this book on the myths of coaching. I'm a lecturer in sports science and coaching science at Munster Technological University in the Department of Sport, Leisure and Childhood Studies and there I'm also a team lead for skill acquisition research. The chapter you're about to read is on the myths of deliberate practice. It's a whistle stop tour through the brief and illustrious career of um, deliberate practice. Following a general introduction, there is discussion on the origins and the definition of the term. Then you'll read a summary of the research that followed, including the implications and the limitations of that work. Then I go into look at the misunderstandings and misinterpretations of the evidence that led to myths about deliberate practice making their way into the public domain. Before concluding with information for the effective practical application of deliberate practice for the development of expertise in your sport of choice. I really hope you enjoy uh, the chapter. I thoroughly enjoyed writing it. I've been an advocate of deliberate practice in my work as a coach um, for the best part of the last 15, 20 years. Um, my work predominantly is in the elite athlete space and I would believe that it is all but impossible to acquire expertise without engaging in deliberate practice. However, the, the application of, the, of deliberate practice is what sometimes can be challenging for coaches. So hopefully you'll find some informa in interesting information in this chapter. But also I'd, be, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if there's any comments, feedback, questions about the content, by all means get in touch. I, I can be contacted um, at Twitter, uh, at Dr. Skillac, G-R-S-K-I-L-L-A-C-Q, or on um, email at um, drskillac at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you, and uh, the very best of luck with your own endeavors. Bye for now.